Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by a very, very exciting North Carolina Courage and Canada Women's National Team fullback, Sydney Collins. Pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me. Very excited to chat with you today. I feel like it has been, well, it was a very busy year for you last year. How have you uh, enjoyed the off season a little bit now? Yeah, it's been nice to be home on the West Coast for a little bit in the off season. Um, and just spend time with friends and family after a busy year. But I'm um, really excited for this year and, you know, a lot, lot to look forward to. There's definitely a lot to look forward to. But I think before we start looking forward to things, let's take a quick look back um, at things and how you started playing soccer. So you kind of joined the soccer academy, your local soccer academy, when you were about eight. Was it always soccer or were you kind of like dabbling around with different sports? Because you grew up with a pretty sporty family. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I, I played a bunch of sports growing up. I liked softball, um, track and fields, um, but ultimately landed on soccer. Um, both my parents were professional athletes, so we always were, you know, playing any sports we could, but, um, but yeah, no, I think at a young age, I fell in love with, with soccer and that was, um, uh, that's not changed. So was it kind of when you take that step to join the uh, academy at Portland Thorns? Was that kind of a step of okay, we're really focused here on on soccer? And were you, did you drop other kind of sports, or were you still going with with everything? Um, I think in middle school I started to really focus on soccer because of you know the ECNL team that I played for. We were traveling every weekend, and um, I at that time had to pick soccer over softball, which. Um, you know, was, was fine. And then in high school, I was able to balance track and field for a little bit, but as we got um, closer to college, I really had to focus on soccer. So at that time, I think I ran for two years in, in high school, um, loves track, but you know, ultimately it was going to be soccer in the end. So I, um, that's when I really started to focus on just preparing for college soccer. It's really interesting. I feel like there's always a parallel with track and field and soccer players. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's very, good combination it, it turns out to be great for the players because then you've got the pace and you've got so many different yeah. attributes um but was it a lot of I guess driving because I saw it was like a half an hour away the Portland Thorns Academy to where you went in school was it a lot of like your parents an hour a day almost taking you to school and everything balanced out? yeah luckily um I had a lot of friends that I went to high school with that played for the Thorns Academy so we mm -hmm. made it work it wasn't it wasn't too far with both my parents working in the city but um but yeah, the Thorns, the Thorns Academy was downtown, definitely a little bit of a drive. I played for um, FC Portland Academy for most of high school, um, mm -hmm. and that was really close by. So I um, had to shout out FC Portland a little bit. <laughs> so it was like a bus of, of everybody kind of going and coming back together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, with, with high school, I think you won a lot of state championships and you got recognized plenty for a lot of your 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 play on the field and then you're also a leader um, or captain uh, so named for the team uh, when you were I guess navigating that change to collegiate soccer was there a lot of options in mind were you still not sure if you wanted to commit to soccer or was it kind of an easy decision to handle of right we're going to go to collegiate soccer um, and take it seriously from there like how did that process look for you the recruiting process, um, when I was going through it, where there was no regulations and rules, so it started really early. Um, I think after my freshman year of high school, I was starting to look at schools, and I knew I wanted to play college soccer. I think that that was always the goal for me. Um, I really wanted to play in the Pac-12, um, and I didn't want to be too far from home, but that was just about all I knew with what I wanted when I was entering the recruiting process. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I... I would say I was a little bit lost. And then I randomly went to a Cal ID camp with one of my friends that was already going. And we spent a week on campus and I just loved every second of it. And I was like, wow, this is where I want to go to school. And then um, six months later, I went to another ID camp and then committed after that. So honestly, it wasn't this really calculated decision. And it wasn't really, honestly, a lot of other front runners in my mind or um, schools that I was looking at closely, but, um, luckily that decision was just one of the best ones I'd made because my freshman year, um, of high school, I, I was a little bit lost and I definitely landed in the right spot, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, uh, 
I would say my recruiting process was um, pretty easy overall, um, mm-hmm. but I I definitely staying close to home was, was a priority for me. Yeah, well, California is still, I guess, a little bit far. Was it hard to adjust being away from home, given that you had spent really all your time playing soccer with with family and I guess the friends that you trained with? Yeah, um, I I actually went to college with one of my best friends. We played soccer at Cal together. Um, so that was that made the transition much easier. And um, it ended up being a great distance away from home because it was like an hour flight um, to Northern California from Portland and got to see my parents a lot during college. So um, I think the first semester, like any, is a transition phase. And, you know, I took some adjusting. I think we won like five games that, that year. <laughs> but um you know, we worked into it and uh, it was it was just a great experience at Cal. But even that freshman season, you said like, obviously, there was a, a lot of adjustment. Um, you were named captain. Like, was that a lot of pressure kind of being thrown at you right away as you were trying to adjust being away from home, doing the whole school and college and academics, but also now being named captain for the team? Yeah, I think um, I think I was, you know, I think I had been told going into the season, like there were a lot of really integral parts of their team that had graduated the year before and Mm -hmm. that our class coming in was going to be really depended on. So I think we went into that season with the mindset of, okay, like we need to be ready to play if we're asked to. And um, it was definitely a big step up. I'm not going to lie, like into college soccer, I, you know, I was a lot smaller than a lot of the people I was playing against, obviously the pace increases immensely. And um, yeah, I would say I just learned a lot that year alongside Mm -hmm. my teammates. And I think looking back the next season, our sophomore year, we had a really good season. And I think um, it was honestly a lot in part to the lessons we learned the hard way, you know, my freshman year. So sometimes that's unfortunately the way to go about it. Yeah. I I feel like it set you up for a really good five year that you spent there at the university. Mm -hmm. That I guess, stage of people's soccer careers, either where they have a huge dropout rate and kind of it's too hard to to maintain and keep up with because it's quite, I guess, demanding on the body. You're still having to balance out academics. How, I guess, did you rate that collegiate soccer experience um, over the course of the, the multiple seasons that you were there for? Yeah, I, I mean, again, I just, I loved my experience so much at Cal. Um, I was, you know, it was, it was a place where I felt like I was able to really grow in mm. the soccer world, but also um, with my education and just as like a person, I felt like I developed so much in so many areas and um, it really forced, you know, it forces, it, you're right, it really does like weed out some people. Um, it forces a lot of focus and a lot of discipline. And um, I think I just kind of fell in love with, you know, being a part of that team and being at that university. And um, yeah, it was just, it was a great experience, um, but it definitely forces you to um, really prioritize soccer and school. And there's not a ton of time for anything else, really. Yeah, 24 hours, they almost don't feel enough. Um, yeah. But I mean, clearly you impressed. And, and I think obviously there was a lot of scouts that were there looking at you, given the results that were that happened in the draft, um, which we'll talk in a, in a moment. Um, Signing up for the draft, and I guess thinking about that next step of going pro, um, was it a tough decision, or were you kind of sure from the get go when you you were at university that right the next step was going to be going pro through the draft, or I guess like again, how did that decision process go for you? Because it always looks like so complicated from behind the scenes. Yeah, um, I think I think I was about a junior in college when I started to kind of set that as a goal of mine. Um, I think my first goal as a, you know, a young soccer player was, oh my gosh, I want to play college soccer. And when I kind of got there and was in that environment, I was like, okay, I want to play professional soccer, whether that's for a year, for a few years, like wasn't sure what to expect, but um, I knew that whether I had to go overseas, whether I had, you know, to, to try out on in a, end of a cell team. Like Mm -hmm. I wanted to really achieve that goal. So I don't think, so signing up for the draft was, um, an easy decision for me. Um, especially after I had taken my fifth year and decided to kind of just gain another year of college experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 
definitely wanted to play in the NWSL because I wanted to, I mean, this league is so exciting and the development of this league and the growth of this league, I, that was the dream, but I wasn't quite sure if it was going to happen or what was going to happen. Um, so I did, you know, obviously had that not happened, I would have tried to play overseas and found a team that way, but, um, uh, yeah, definitely glad I got to play my first season in, in the States. Yeah. Um, uh, but yes, it was not, it was, it was always kind of a goal of mine to check that box off of, of playing professional soccer. You said you kind of didn't know how that was going to go. How was your, um, I guess draft day? Like, did, did you have an inclination of what was going to happen? Like, are you told at all that you're going to get called up or you just kind of go in it and you're crossing fingers that somebody calls up your name? <laughs> it's really stressful. It is, it is really stressful. Um, I, I had talked to a few teams leading up to the draft that were, you know, interested to what extent, you know, you never really know because draft day is crazy. Um, I had talked to the courage, um, the day before, and it was a really positive conversation, but prior to that day, I had no idea they even knew who I was. So, um, after that phone call, I was like, okay, you know, this, this could happen. Um, but I, I was, I mean, I knew they only had sort of high picks and it's not where I would have placed myself in the draft. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we'll see how this goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was so stressed around that time period that I, I didn't want to go to the draft. I didn't want to watch the draft with anybody, but my parents. <laughs> so I, I honestly just watched it at home with both my parents and, um, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it was a great day, obviously when, when that all unfolded, but mm -hmm. I don't think, I think it could have gone honestly a number of ways. Um, you just never really know it's really hard to put a finger on it. And I think with a big pool of the players that sign up, but so little picks get taken, yeah. it's really up in the air. But you said you kind of still had plans, I guess, of going abroad or to Europe as a backup plan, had that not gone yeah. your way. Well, mm -hmm. it's great they picked you up because I feel like they saved you a lot of decision-making um, yeah. processes. But um, that switch, I guess, from collegiate soccer to professional is always a huge jump. And I think we see a lot of players kind of struggle with the speed the physicality how was it for you kind of again like you mentioned you took an extra year for experience at university but um again you were thrown straight into the senior stage and, and the challenge cup came straight at you um how were you able to adjust and again that was a little bit far away from home like across the other part of the country yeah yeah, I mean, it was a huge adjustment period. Um, I think that there was a huge learning curve for me and just there continues to be so much to learn in this new level. Mm. Uh, I found personally that the jump from college soccer to professional was a big one and just speed of play, quality of players, expectations. I think that um, definitely the first six months of my professional career, I learned a lot. And I think you know, as a young player, it just takes time in that environment to adjust sometimes. And um, yeah, I think I think that I felt a little thrown into the fire at times, but I do I do feel like um, like I said, I just continue to learn and, and grow a lot. And I feel like that is the benefit of having such a high level soccer environment um, like the end of NWSL teams have mm -hmm. is that every day you're challenged by really great players and you're in a really elite level environment. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I love it, but I do think that, um, if I'm being honest, I learned probably more this, but the, those first six months than I have in the last like six years. <laughs> and did you feel like you had a good, good enough support system, I guess, at the club who consistently and constantly deal with rookies, um, coming into the league, but also your parents being professional, um, athletes in, in their own sports back in their day yes yes definitely um I think it's it's definitely valuable um my parents I feel like have been through similar situations as you know I have and my dad always tells me like don't get too high don't get too low and I think during that process that was really helpful um to just try to keep pushing forward even you know though it was it was challenging and uncomfortable at times um but but yeah I think that you know, the courage and NWSL clubs understand the adjustment period for rookies. And um, I think, you know, they just have development plans and try to keep growing players over time. And then eventually, um, you know, they get out of that phase. But yeah, yeah 
yeah, it's definitely not easy when everything's coming at you and then you get your uh, debut in April, but then a, a week later you're playing for Canada um, in France. How did that, I guess, process uh, look like in decision making? Uh, I guess, when was it a conversation where you were like, let me explore? Because you had played uh, for the US at the youth stages, um, but never really for Canada and you weren't cap tied just yet. Um, how did that kind of come about of, of the, the idea of repping Canada really? Um, yeah, I, I think that, um, well, it honestly all unfolded in a span of like five minutes. Like I got drafted and then Bev texted me like, let's explore your Canadian citizenship. So <laughs> like the best five moments of my life. <laughs> but, um, uh, no, I mean, I've had, I've had a passport for the last couple of years. Um, and in the back of my mind, I always, you know, was like, this would be a really cool opportunity, but it just kind of never really came to fruition and obviously spent time with the, you know, U17 and the U23 groups with the U.S. and like love those experiences. And I think those really prepared me to be in high level soccer environments. Mm -hmm. But I mean, ultimately, when when I was offered a, you know, a practice player spot with the full team, um, I was just, you know, that's what I think anybody dreams of. So I was just kind of taking the opportunities in front of me, whether when I was younger, that was with the U.S. or now with, with Canada. Um, but I, I mean, I feel like, I feel like ever since I stepped foot in camp with Canada, like it's just felt like such a right fit for me. And I feel like I've really found my home with that team because, um, you know, obviously I was, I was a practice player and then you're right in April when mm -hmm. I made my debut. Um, and again, I, I needed some time to adjust and to, you know, feel comfortable with the group and learn the system and, I think I was really given a lot of resources from Canada and shown that they care about my future and invest, mm -hmm. you know, in me. And so I think that that's really all that any young player can ask for. And I, um, yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't a super calculated decision yeah. because I just sort of went with the, the opportunity in front of me, but, yeah. um, I'm really glad that, that it's worked out the way it has. I can't imagine getting the news that you just got drafted and then looking at your phone and there's Beth Reisman telling you, come join yeah. us here at Canada. But I mean, I guess, did, did it take a lot of convincing from her or were there just aspects that stood out to you and you were, and you were like, I'm coming in? Yeah, no, there there is really no convincing. I, you know, I was excited. I watched Canada, you know, the girls play forever. And yeah. I mean, once it was like, hey, do you want to come to this camp? Like, I was like, I will be there. <laughs> so it was, it was really no convincing. Um, and, and yeah, it was cool. Like, tell me the time and location and I will be making it on the <laughs> flight. Yes. Um, but I think you, it's perfect how it's turned out, I think, now in the recent, in, in recent months. But you made your debut, I guess, in April where there were, I guess, a lot of negotiations from the team and the, the board. Was it a, a bit difficult, I guess, to make your debut in such a, a high tension in the midst of negotiations with the team or they gave you a good environment where you were welcomed in and you didn't feel like you were thrown into this absolute fire? I mean, I think a little bit of both. Yeah. I, you know, I was 100% welcomed when I showed up at camp, but I think everybody was laughing because they were like, wow, this is a really interesting first camp for someone. Because <laughs> yeah. it was when it was the She Believes, which was kind of at the start of, of everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... It was really cool for me to come into the environment, even though it was unorthodox and different. Um, it was really cool for me to see the character of the group because I feel like um, there was just such great leadership during that time, which was a really hard time for us and obviously with the Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just feel like that was that really inspired me, like that the future of Canada soccer like really matters to these players and to this team. And um I was honestly like inspired by watching, you know, everything unfold. Um, but yes, it was, I mean, it was it was definitely a different first camp. I mean, I got yeah. there and they were like, we are not training. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but but I think in all seriousness, um, to be in that environment and to watch the way everything unfolded and to watch the leadership of the veterans like was was really cool to be to have a front seat I think a lot of players probably 
and you called it an orthodox situation had they been thrown in it they're like i'm not coming back i'm good to go like i i'll go back to the youth stages and see what happens there but um you mentioned leadership and i think that's one of the biggest qualities that canada has with a lot of leaders in the squad is there a player or two that i guess kind of like stood out to you and and made you feel the most welcome in in that situation or, or was it really just a collective effort I mean, I think it was, it was definitely a collective effort. Um, mm -hmm. I have always and continue to look up to Janine. Um, I think, you know, she's, she's definitely someone who took a big um, role in, in everything. And additionally, like understands what it's like to be a dual national in that environment. So um, I think Janine would be my answer, but definitely a collective effort. Well, I hope she's back in the squad very soon. So you get to ball with her on, on the field because I think a lot of us are missing that. Uh, yeah. But there was a little bit of a break, obviously, in, in the World Cup. Uh, I guess, unfortunately, you didn't get the call. But then September rolls around. The Jamaica qualifiers, I think from an outside perspective, there was a lot of pressure in Canada to not only qualify um, for the Olympics as Olympic champions, but also bounce back from that World Cup. And again, you were invited into the camp. And then you play both of those games back to back, start 90 minutes. And in the media room in Toronto, I remember there was three things we were talking about. The crowd, but number two was Sydney Collins is praying like a professional veteran who's been in the squad for the last 10 years. Like you would not guess that you're on your second or third cap, but also how fast you were. I mean, how were you able to adapt so quickly like that into a new system that the team was trying out, um, have your skills and skill set be showcased that well on the big stage? Um, and I guess just, again, looking so comfortable in, in, in that squad that you had really spent a lot of time with. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, it was it was helpful for me to be kind of there on day one with the new system. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like before I was playing a little catch up, like trying to learn how people play and, you know, the system that we were building in, in the spring and to be kind of like at the start of a new system was really helpful for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that camp we had, you know, it was, it, you're right. There was a lot of pressure, but we also were all committed to really learning this new system. And I think that there was so much information and so much learning that it was really helpful for me to feel comfortable when I stepped on the field. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, playing in this new system, I feel like I'm able to kind of, use some of my strengths that sometimes I'm not able to use in other environments or haven't used when I played center back in college or, mm -hmm. you know, this, that, and the other. So I felt like I was kind of set up for success by our preparedness as a team and kind of the system itself with the role they're asking me to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think with both of those factors, I, I feel like once we stepped on the field, like I felt comfortable because um, I knew we had really studied what we were about to do. And I also knew that um, I could contribute some attributes to that system. Oh, massive con contribution, I think. And is there anybody faster than you from that squad? Or uh, I guess when you do some of those races, it's it's you on top. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't raced, but I will say <laughs> Chloe Lacasse is pretty fast. <laughs> she she does get that compliment. And, and I think we asked uh, the media room, we asked uh, Beth Priestman, and, and she said, I've never seen anybody with legs like Sydney Collins. Like she runs like an absolute turbine, which is, I guess, a really good attribute. And I think with the system and, and playing that fullback role that requires you, I guess, a lot of running up front, but also coming back, it definitely comes in handy. And I think that's where a lot of the uh, track and field aspects come in as well. But um, back to some of those home games in that Toronto crowd, uh, you've mentioned how uh, summers and holidays, you'd come visit your family here in, in Toronto. Were they in the crowd uh, watching you? They were. And that was actually the first game that they had seen live of me. So it was a, oh. uh, yeah, it was, it was really special. And my, my parents had flown up that week. Um, it was actually my, my grandmother's 90th birthday. Oh. So it was like, it was perfect. I had a bunch of people um, in the stands. Everything was like set in and, and, and the yeah. stage <laughs> was up there. And then you go on to play. Uh, and I think, again, a bit of an orthodox situation where Canadian players played this many run of home games because mm -hmm. the team hasn't really gotten that many run of home games. Um, was it fun to kind of like travel around the country and, and play those big games and, 
I guess most most recently the the Sinclair send off window. Like, was it a cool experience to have to have all that happening again all at once? Yes, I it was just awesome experiences. I mean, it was cool for me to see you know a few other parts of Canada that I hadn't hadn't yet been to. Um, because I've been to Toronto, you know, a bunch to see my family, but it was, it was awesome. And it was awesome to interact with like fans and just the support we, we got from, you know, East to West coast. And then the Sinclair send off game, you know, obviously have grown up just a big, a big fan of, of hers. So to be kind of at that game and to experience that on the, being a part of the team was just really special. Do you have a favorite moment um, from any of the camps? Um, I think one of my favorite moments um, was in Toronto when we when Jordan scored the header. Um, I just feel like that was such a cool moment because I felt like we had a lot of momentum in that game, and then you know they scored that amazing free kick and. It was a little stressful there for a second, but I felt like we really stayed our course as a team and, you know, the environment of that stadium, like I said, was just so electric and to have my family in the stands was just a night I'll never, ever forget. No, it was, it was I think, very special and to see the team celebrate and be happy after, you know, pretty sad scenes from the World Cup. It was refreshing and, and fantastic and kind of like a new slate looking ahead of the World Cup. Now, I think it's pretty, uh, I guess, fair to assume that you'll be getting pretty consistent call-ups now and, and a regular on the team sheet for Canada. How do you anticipate, I guess, uh, uh, balancing a very busy season in terms of switching from club to country with possibly the Olympics? Um, shall you stay healthy the summer? And like, have you thought about that or is it kind of too early to to really think about everything that's going to come uh, once the season gets going and, and Canada's in action? Yeah, I mean, I definitely looked at the schedule and it's, it's you know, it could it could potentially be a really busy spring. Um, but I think, I think the, the best part about, you know, playing like different roles and going between like club and country is that the roles are, are different. Like mm-hmm. the way we play left back at club is an inverted left back and the way Canada plays is very attack minded. And so um, I think, the biggest thing for me is just, is just, you know, playing my role in each of the environments and like really learning each system and trying to, to be the best I can be in that role. So, um, no, I mean, I look, I look forward to both teams and to, to being hopefully called in, um, a few more times in the spring, but, um, but yeah, it's, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited, uh, for what's to come this year, but, um, yeah, definitely just, again, trying to focus on really playing my best role in both those environments because they look a little different right now. They do look very different. And I think that was another thing that we were taken by surprise of you, that new system, you were playing it very well and, and it was different to what you play at club. Um, going into now your second season in, with the NWSL and, and kind of having already experienced that first six months to a year of adjustment, what are some of your goals, I guess, or, or things that you like to achieve this, this season? Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, obvious one is it to get a little bit more minutes at the club level. Um, we, you know, had a really veteran back line last year. And like I said, I was in that really like learning development phase. Um, but I just, you know, one of my goals is to just impact the team as much as I can. And um, I've been really just trying to follow, you know, my development plan pretty closely and, you know, just honestly, this is going to sound really small, but just stack good days together because yeah. um, I'm trying to really just, you know, focus on being the best I can in my role right now. And um, I'm hopeful, you know, that this year I'll get, you know, a little bit more time, but mm-hmm. that's obviously a big goal um, leading into, you know, this spring and ahead of this, this preseason is to just play a bigger role. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, that I think it makes a lot of sense. With it's always a little bit tough for rookies to kind of make that for a squad and and get a little bit more minutes. So I think more minutes this upcoming season would be super fun from us to watch, but but as well for you to keep you prepped and and kind of in tip top shape. Um, there's two questions that I posted on Twitter and a lot of folks were asking. 
first of all, the first one is soccer related. The second one is not soccer related. So I, I guess we'll finish things off with a non-soccer related question and give you the soccer related question. <laughs> um, okay. Do you see yourself playing in Europe in the future, possibly? Yeah, I think it's something I would definitely be open to. Um, I think, you know, I, I honestly never would have expected playing in North Carolina. Um, and that's been a good experience. So um, yeah, I would, I would definitely be open to it in the future. Um, for sure. Any like European teams you, you enjoy watching like women's champions league that you like to catch their games or is it kind of like an all rounder like kind of, of European clubs? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've, I watch, yeah, I mean, I watch a bunch of games. I don't think that there's like one team that really sticks out to me right now, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, I think I would definitely pop over there for a little bit. <laughs> different weather different uh, soccer culture but I guess that's for a different chat of soccer culture um and the last question is and very important one is how do you take your Tims my Tims um I mean every time we go to Tims I definitely get some Timbits um and just a coffee honestly can't go wrong with a classic Timbits and yep. coffee <laughs> Sydney <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today pleasure talking to you and I think we're very, very excited to see what is loading up for you this year. Thank you for having me.